this is Calvin Castine. It's still six minutes before official start time, but looks like they started at least 15 minutes early here at Northeastern Clinton. Apparently everybody was here and we got thunderstorms on the horizon. It's clear at the moment. So we decided to get going. Unfortunately, we weren't here to witness the beginning. They were going to uh, take a few more steps and we realized this uh, dash was going to be taken off. So we decided to stop right here and tape it. Our apologies, we got here in plenty of time, but uh, can't blame them for starting early on a day when the, the weather is going to be changing and uh, it's clear at the moment, but if a bolt of lightning uh, flashes on the horizon, they've got to stop their competition. I'm trying, so I'm sure they're trying to get this in if possible. This is uh, track and field at Northeastern, Seton Catholic visiting. Both well, the Seton Catholic Knights and the Northeastern Clinton Central School Cougars. Looks like we have another race that'll be starting momentarily. They usually start with one of the longer races and then have the hurdles and then this, so looks like they have done the hurdles and done that like uh, Sable Valley, let's see, is that an uh, Sable Valley shirt in the middle? Oh, no, Peru. It's Peru, it's not Seton Catholic, it's Peru that's here. I don't know why I thought it was said Seton on the shirts over here, but uh, teach me to open up my eyes. It says Peru, this is Peru in Northeastern Clinton. Apologies to everyone involved. At least I got the Northeastern Clinton Central School apart. Correct. Still trying to make our way over, but another race is going to be starting shortly. And in fact, in two minutes, the meet will start. We're still two minutes away from the official start time. The gun is up. There they come. Battle was for third. Peru took first and the Northeastern second. Battle to the wire for third. High jump going on. There we go. Okay, I have found out that um, this meet was scheduled early ahead of time and that a certain uh, athletic director here at Northeastern who shall remain nameless didn't call me. So I could have been here on time could have got here for the early events, would have got here for the early events had we been notified. So I no longer take any blame for not being here. They rescheduled it earlier today and if I had known I would have been here for the early start. Remember, we're not naming any names here. Just the uh, athletic director who didn't call me will remain nameless. Long jump, long jump. 
All right, nice job, guys. We've got a 1500 for the girls and a 1600 meter for the boys. Now the gun is up again. And the boys are off. Girls will come into view. I had a couple of baseball games that I was considering choosing from for today's coverage. But I thought this would be the most uh, likely to be completed, barring lightning. Boys are sneaking up on the girls here. The girl leaders are still quite a ways ahead, all things considered. Here's a long jump. Uh, an, uh, almost long jump. Four hundred meters around the track. So when they cross here, they'll have two laps to go. Herdick and Dragoon are going to cross together here, halfway through. Got to run your own race. And uh, can't pay attention if somebody uh, jumps out at a fast pace and you burn yourself out trying to catch up to him or her. So you got to run your own race, got to know your own pace. And of course, it's a It'll be a little, probably a little bit easier on the home course because uh, you recognize the uh, items on the horizon. It's not like uh, cross country where you have ups and downs and hills and dales to go through. Yeah, you're just running in circles, but uh, I'm sure there are items along the way that you pace yourself and recognize uh, makes you more apt to run your own race one lap to go this will be the gun lap one lap to go One lap to go is the girls leader, Adrian Herdick, not, eh, don't know the Peru names. No, relatively few of the Northeastern names. And here's the winner. Travis Dragoon. Fastest man at Northeastern. And the Peru finisher. 
Another Peru finisher. And we have a Katrin Hurdick coming in. She'll be the leader for the girls. Comes the Peru leader. Throwing going on. There we go. It looks like a good throw. Come on, Ashley, last way. It's a 4x100 relay. Taking the lead on this leg. So on the handoff, Cruz got a few seconds. One more handoff. Oh, that'll do it. Cougar's trying to hurry it, and they're about Two seconds behind on the handoff till they dropped it. So the dropped handoff will uh, prevent a photo finish. That would have been a close sprint to the finish line, but uh, wasn't to be. It's the part of your body that comes closest to the taking off point. So even if your feet land and then uh, you fall back, catch yourself with your hand, or you fall back, land on your head, it's where whatever touches closest to the starting point. So it's not where your feet land. 
obviously where your feet land is uh, is important, but that doesn't uh, make the determining factor you want it to be. You don't want to have anything other than your feet be the last thing that uh, the closest thing to touch the uh, line, but. It's happened that, uh, and pu pushing the feet ahead, that uh, the upper part of the body uh, lands behind the feet and touches the sand. Four by four for the boys is next. Well, Don is ready. Same, which would tell us that they're closer than they look. Now they go through, open up a second or two lead. And uh, we found out in the girls' race, uh, uh, handoff uh, is critical. It's going to come down to be close, but it looks like Peru's going to win it. Four by 100 goes to Peru. And a good race. Clean race. It looks like a 400 about to go off. One time around, looks like Knapp has jumped out to a big lead. the Peru runners, but we're going to show this in the Channel 15 viewing area so they can at least see themselves, not hear their names, they can at least see themselves. Apologies, but there's no way without uh, a lot of help from the, the parents and the coaching staff that we could cover getting their names. And uh, they're pretty much maxed out just uh, coordinating all these events without worrying about uh, helping Hometown Cable out. So they're, they're pretty busy. It takes quite a few people to put one of these on to begin with. So to find uh, somebody that knows all, their, all the names from both sides, uh, well, we've been doing this for 20 years and we haven't found anybody yet to do it for us, so. They probably won't in the next 20 years either.
couple of barmaids there helping out. Nope. Just can't seem to get the posterior up. Hard to believe that uh, the Fosbury flop uh, was once a new innovation. There's the boys, 400. I can remember in the, I think it was in the, in the 60s, the Fosbury flop, the first guy to uh, do the high jump and go over backwards, and uh, it was a big innovation. But now it's the standard procedure. It's like the two-handed uh, set shot in basketball. Ain't nobody doing that anymore. Stay in their lane. It's going to come right down here. Cougar is in the lead. All right, Peru finishes second, third, and fourth. Cougars will finish fifth and sixth and first. And there's your winner. Seriously, good Superman. Uh, I don't want to change their mind on the triple jump. starting. What we got? Another 400. Yep. Just a couple of cougars. Must be a 400 second heat. back at the race. Delafrange. Next, we've got uh, 400 hurdles here. Christy Knapp for the Cougars. The gun is up.
And all right. All right, we'll get up right up there to the hurdles. Looks like the Peru racer is leading the pack. Ahead by quite a bit. Morgan, I know in Peru it's Ramillard, I think. They <laughs> saying, "Come on, Morgan." And the Peru runner will win it. Morgan, you beat me, Morgan. About five seconds ahead of the Cougar, and another three seconds behind. Is the second pro runner. Remember, when you go to Northeastern, be sure to wear some flowers in your hair. Gentle people here with flowers in their hair. Boys hurdles coming up momentarily. Big field here for the boys' hurdles. Okay. Go by. Like the cougar is up by quite a bit. The race is for second at this point. Look, it slipped out of this guy's hands. He was about to throw it and slipped out of his fingers. Thank <laughs> you. 
All right, this says the makings of a long one here. Starting off at 514. And your leaders after one lap. Side-handed throw there. Side armor. <laughs> Completing lap number two. Okay, it's an 800. First <coughs> four finishers are Peru. And we got a Cougar. Boys race coming up. <laughs> there, waiting for the crew to go through. thing out at the moment. No lightning thus far. I would expect we're running the 800 here, so two times around. Player out. 
Hopefully he cramped up. A runner out for Peru. We'll keep our eyes on our leaders here. Hopefully it's just a cramp. At the moment, it's a two-man race. Dragoon in the lead. He's been known to switch gears right about here, but not doing it today. being helped off. He's hobbling there. Dragoon will uh, finish quite easily. Running by about eight, over eight seconds. Nice coasting in at the end. Uh, uh, I think where the timers are standing is the finish. Uh, some of these guys are coasting their final couple of steps. All the throwing is done. The high jumping is done, and I think the... Oh, there's still some activity on the long jump area. That is just about done. Triple jump. The gun is up on the next race. Looks like a 200 from here. Those are staggered. <laughs> Peru runner pulling away. against one. Looks like the boys are set. And they're off. Like Warner for the Cougars. Oh, wait a minute, got somebody on the inside here. Oh, there we go. Another heat about to begin. And waiting for the gun to go up. It's up. Just uh, three of them. Well, maybe four. Four.
Alright. A couple of cougars, an Indian, and a cougar. Starting to rain. Start here, gun stops them. Okay, not in the rain here. We're going to run the 3000 for the girls and not run the 3200 for the boys at the same time, which would be questionable. You got to run these at the same time, get these over with before it really pours. So here are the boys. Now the girls will have to line up and start over again. And the girls are off. And the boys are off. Boys completing their first lap. Pedometer on her one of these days and see how many miles she puts on at these track meets. Looks like the cougar is falling behind. Boys are still bunched up. I have to be choosy which uh, direction I shoot the camera because of the raindrops falling. I'm not sure if the camera will pick it up. But there's a light area in the middle here where it looks like it's between the, the raindrops, but it's a few miles away from us. We are in the middle of the raindrops, but uh, just lightly at the moment. That's a good fellow. Well, 
boys are still pretty close. Halfway through the race. And the girls are coming into the picture. Tribal dance. Boys now completing their fifth leg. <clears throat> Eight times around. Starting to spread out now. Two to go for the boy, three to go for <coughs> the girl, three or four. Are she halfway through? Uh, what kind of chips does a, a long distance runner eat? There'll be no endorsements here. Here comes our leader. Oops, there's the girls' leaders. One to go. Come on, Joe, go! Gun didn't go off, but gun lap. Come on, Matt! Good job, kiddo! Go, Matt! Go get it, Jim! Go get it, Jim! Make sure you good. Telling her she's got one. She's got more than one lap to go. <laughs> you better recount. Rain getting heavier. This might be the last race that I cover. Alright, here's the boys' winner. Another lap to go. Boy, second place finisher. <coughs> Third place.
girls winner. And here's third place. Now this I believe would be the last race. A relay doesn't look like Peru has a relay team in the boys division. Gun is up. Leave this four by eight. again. Runners to your mark. There we go. Can't follow him all the way around because of the rain. If we attempted to follow him all the way around, all we'd have is a big wet lens. We'll show the boys a little bit, but uh, obviously the race is with the girls, not with the boys, because there's only one team. Looks like it's a four by one, not a four by eight. Four by one hundred, four by uh, four by uh, four, I guess they call it. Four by four. On the handoff, Peru has an advantage. Four by four. The girls' race is still tight. There's the boys' handoff. <laughs> and here comes the girls. We'll be halfway through on this handoff. Well, I'd say less than two seconds difference between the two. Girls uh, aren't in view yet. We'll show where they are, then we'll get back here for the boys' handoff. So Peru's opened it up a little bit more. Here comes the final handoff for the boys. About 10 seconds difference. Unfortunately, we have to switch batteries. <clears throat> well, we didn't uh, see the finish for the boys, but again, only one team racing. It's 
Not that interesting. Peru girls will win by quite a bit. Start counting now. Now. I'd say by at least 10 seconds. There's 10 seconds. A 12 to 13 second lead to win there for Peru. That's going to wrap it up. Hometown Cable's coverage, Peru at Northeastern. CBAC track and field, May 18th, 2004. Our apologies for not being here at the start, but we weren't aware of the, of the new start time. There. They started earlier today because of a concert in Peru. So thanks for watching and for those of you supporting viewer-supported local television, hometown cable. Win or lose, TV that's worth your support.